we'll we'll talk about you know toll free a little bit more. <clears throat> so, like I said, there's a um, the, the history was toll free numbers were sometimes text enabled, but then this formal program got put into place. It's been about ten years, um, and um, it's a thing that's available like where toll free numbers are. So in the U.S. and Canada, that's that's where we had toll free. Those numbers you can you can um, text enable a toll free number, and generally will work in in the uh, you know North American um, areas. But um, again, the key. So so we're going to use this car uh, analogy a few times in this presentation, and so we're we're looking at this as like hopefully people are taking this well. Like the Mustang is pretty sweet sports car. Um, so you want to look at it like there's a sophisticated level. The the throughput and the um, the way that you stand on toll free is closer to short codes than it is to long codes, and I'll I'll get into that in, in a little bit. Um, but it's it's a pretty good option for you if you're looking at how you're um, how fast you're sending, how much you're sending. So velocity and volume are are key. So if we go to the next slide, we'll drill down a little bit more about why we're going to do um, toll free texting. So the benefits are pretty simple. Um, you the Pricing straightforward. You get, um, uh, you know, more and more. The messaging is a message. Is a message. Is a message. So the price is the pretty pretty similar. Um, there's no need for a separate registration like you do on Ten Digi. You have to go to the, the campaign registry and register. And we'll talk a little bit about that. It's very very simple. Um, and then, like I said, you get these handset delivery receipts. That's the um, I think one of the most important aspects of this. If you you know, you're paying a little bit more for the message, um, but you know it got through. Um, it doesn't matter how much you save if the message doesn't get delivered. It's, it doesn't matter. So you've got to focus on delivery and and, and the like. Um, you know, when you think about the consumer, you're you're um, recognizing the number as a business it's for old people like me, and um, and you can um, engage. The other key piece on the 800 is around the escalation to a voice call. So unlike short codes, you can actually voice enable your numbers are already enabled for calling. So if the text messaging escalates into a uh, the need for a phone call, they can do that on the same line as opposed to having to text a number on a short code, having that consumer hopefully be able to click on it or copy it. It's very cumbersome. So um, so we, we talk about some of the benefits. Again, volume and velocity are, are, um, are pretty good once you get verified. So I want to talk about that. And let's go to the next slide and talk about what might not be good about toll free. So the, uh, the things that are, oh, go ahead, Simon. Yeah, before we do, um, sorry to interrupt your wonderful flow there. Um, I have a question and a comment. The comment is about questions, which is I noticed uh, quite a few of you joined in the last few moments. Um, so for those of you who weren't here for the introduction, we are going to have Q&A at the end, but absolutely you can post as many questions as you want. Um, I know for me and my experience, toll free is a topic that we get a ton of questions about. So feel free to chuck those in the, uh, in the question box. I think it's at the bottom of your screen I can't, or the top, depending on your UI, but it's a big, it's a speech box that says Q&A. And uh, we'll try and cover that uh, as we go along or at the end. Um, the second thing I was going to ask Brad, which is something I'm, I, I get asked a lot, um, is it free for an end customer to text a toll-free number? Like if I'm receiving a message, a toll-free number and I'm in say Washington, you know, from 1-800, you know, Brad text and they reply for free. Yeah, so that's a great, yeah, it's a great question. Um, the, the answer technically is no. Um, hmm. It's not free, but the uh, the other answer is pretty much everybody has unlimited plans. I don't know. I don't know if Gary yeah, yeah. these days that does it, that charges per message. So you're paying for all of your messaging as a you know your bill. But if you broke it down, you could find a, a fraction of a penny or something. I don't know what the breakdown is, but there's no um, what what used to be a thing was um, kind of billing on behalf of or free to end user was the technical term for a um, message that the business took care of it. So back in the day when I paid 10 bucks a month for messaging or 25 cents a message in the early days of messaging, um, there were opportunities for businesses to, to remove that cost to the consumer and make it free. But nowadays it's kind of moot because people all have unlimited plans. Cool. Okay. 
moving on to why not toll free. Um, you know, this is always interesting to try to poke some holes at things. There's, there's, there's a lot of reasons why you would look at toll free. Some of the reasons why you wouldn't is if you have an international use case or you want to be more globally focused. Um, there's um, throughput limits. Like I said, if you don't register or verify your traffic, there's very pedestrian levels that you have to use. And then um, there's a lot more of this um, uh, kind of monitoring and filtering on the toll-free side for different kind of content restrictions. So they'll be much more um, restrictive of the different use cases. And we'll drill down into those in just a minute. But um, but those are some of the things that um, you know if you're if you're not in the U.S. or Canada and you and you want to use this number as and you're likely going to have to go with a different number. Um, still, you could use the same use case, same content, same campaigns, but yeah, have to look at a different sender if you're going internationally. So let's go to the next slide and talk about the use cases or content that isn't allowed. And then um, and and so this is very. You should be thinking about this as across the board, not just with toll-free messaging, but specifically in toll-free, they are hunting for these types of traffic. Um, you know, cannabis is one of the ones we spend a ton of time trying to figure out um, how to make work, but it's fundamentally prohibited by the operators across the board. Um, but in toll-free, they are very, very diligent about hunting for cannabis traffic. So the cannabis senders are, get really creative and they figure out ways to not use anything that says cannabis and they still oftentimes get caught. Um, alcohol, tobacco, there's this acronym in the wireless uh, world called SHAP, which stands for sex, hate, alcohol, firearms, and tobacco. So basically anything that's shaft related is pretty prohibited um, uh, and then will we'll likely get blocked. But when you look at these financial services or get rich quick schemes, Really, this is a byproduct of bad actors. And so generally, people don't want people collecting their debts, right? So if you don't want messages to say, hey, you owe us money, even if it's legit debt collection. So what happens is debt collectors go out and they, they text you, and they're perfectly in the right to text you. But then the consumer says, I don't want this. And they complain to the carrier or apply stop. And, and those factors start to create blocking. And so the carriers have learned over the years that if we just don't allow this, it creates less headaches for the carriers. They don't have as many um, call, you know, um, contact center, you know, people, consumers calling in and complaining. Um, so be mindful of these um, these different uh, use cases or different types of messaging. Um, this is going to be going to this is going to get you in hot water. If you start sending this, it's likely going to get blocked. Um, we go on to the next slide. Um, some of the things that you could just intuitively think are um, really good use cases on uh, um, toll-free or just two-factor authentication, meaning I'm gonna send you a password, uh, a code for you to enter into the website that you're on, um, the speed and throughput being what it is in a verified traffic, you can get those alerts pretty quickly. Um, any type of questions around whether you're having fraud, reminders for your appointment, things like that, um, that you have any kind of, um, High volume, you know, school closings or different things. If you're looking from a finance standpoint, if you're interacting with your bank and they want to give you an account balance or something, generally, they'll larger institutions are going to be using short codes uh, for these types of services. But like I said before, you can text enable your your um, uh, your toll free number, and then you're able to to add that messaging capability in addition to the call center. Um, uh, support. So um, there's a lot of really, really good use cases, um, a lot of good, you know, gigantic brands, um, you know, like the payment company Square, for example, every time you get a cup of coffee, you get a receipt on a toll free number. So lots of really good um, use cases, um, you know, political messaging, like Simon said earlier, another uh, big user of, of um, toll free. Um, and so if you have questions around, you know, is my use case the right one? Um, generally, if it's a quality use case and it's you know driving good consumer behavior, meaning you're not getting a lot, a lot of complaints, um, you're probably good to use toll free. All right. So in this section, we're going to be talking about how you can send a message using a toll free phone number or a dedicated short code number. Uh, there's three main parameters that you need to provide in the API: the text, the from, and the to. The text is the text body. 
The from is the message, the verified toll free number. We'll talk about toll free verification in a, in a little bit, or the verified short code number, the number that you've we've gone through the the campaign brief, we've gone through the verification step. Now you can use this dedicated short code or toll free number, and you can input it into the API. And the two is the where you're sending the message to, the destination phone number. So uh, it's a very simple API. It just requires three fields, and uh, it's very easy to use. We have documentation on this. All right, so toll-free verification. Um, tel Telnix offers APIs and portal features that allow you to submit toll-free verification. Now, the, the why here is a lot of operators uh, recently, uh, with the increase of a lot of A2P traffic, application to person traffic, a lot of mobile operators required the ability for senders to verify their identity. They need to identify the use case, they need to identify why are they sending these messages? They need to identify who's sending these messages. So a lot of these operators said, well, we need to come up with a system, not just for long code, which is 10 DLC, but also for toll free. So with, with toll free, they created a toll free verification system. Um, up until recently, a lot of this has been manual. So it's been a manual, uh, there's a manual form that you have to fill out. You have to submit it to the mobile operators. Each mobile operator would have to ver verify the use case, and then you'd be able to send using that toll-free uh, toll number. Telnix makes that a little bit easier because we have both an API that allows you to submit the toll-free verification, and we have that same functionality that you have with the API in the portal, which I'll go through in a, a little bit here. Um, um, yeah. One fun thing to add here uh, that I learned today from our product lead, who has also been working on uh, this API, uh, currently, and this may change, uh, many of the uh, carriers and aggregators treat a number that has been requested to be verified. So you put in a request and it's pending. They treat that as verified, even though it's not yet. In other words, if you put in a request, um, through our portal to verify the number and you start sending traffic uh, until you're actually re re your verification is rejected, um, you're, you can actually send traffic. So it, it actually does, even if you are waiting a little while to get your verification request completed, assuming that you've done it all properly, um, yeah, for the moment, you can actually get straight into it. So that's something that we yeah. think is uh, pretty cool. Great, Simon, thanks. Um, we're actually gonna go through that right now. So there's three main categories for toll-free verification, verification statuses. There's verified, there's pending verification, and then there's restricted, also known as unverified. Uh, we'll go, we'll start from the bottom up. So restricted or unverified, any number that has not been submitted for verification or has been, uh, as I've been identified as, un, is, is identified as restricted. So numbers in restricted class have the highest amount of filtering applied to the traffic. Numbers will automatically get shut off in this state if any spam or unwanted traffic is detected. So again, if you're, you haven't submitted a verification and, you're, and you are sending some traffic that is questionable by the mobile operators, that's, uh, that's part of the shaft, shaft uh, category, you know, sex, hate, tobacco, firearms. Uh, then it will get shut down automatically if the carriers deem it, deem it as spam. Um, pending verification or in progress, waiting for vendor is another term for this in, in, the, in the Telnix portal. Upon submission of the, the numbers, will be uh, the numbers will be placed into a ver pending verification state. These numbers are opened up for sending with the medium amount of, uh, of spam filtering applied to the traffic. If a block does happen, it will happen to the individual content or a, an automatic block on the phone number, uh, but it, it's at a medium level. So there's a little bit less filtering. There's no restriction on, on how fast you can send at, in the pending state, as Simon kind of alluded to. Once you've submitted that verification, you can start sending away at your heart's content uh, at the same speed as, as a fully verified toll-free number. Uh, the sender will stay in the state until a decision is made about their verification status. Uh, the last status that we need to talk about is verified. Uh, traffic in this, in the verified state, means that it's gone through the verification pro process and it's been approved. Um, numbers in this state will have no, very little amount of spam filtering, 
and the spam filtering will, will only be blocked on the content itself. There will be no automatic block on the number itself. Uh, this protects consumers from unwanted traffic, but it also protects the, the enterprises that are sending these messages so that it's not affecting all of your phone numbers or, or sending to all of your recipients uh, in your list. So you won't be shut down without a, uh, without a formal uh, review. Great. Uh, so this, these next two slides that I, I have listed out here just talk about some of the fields that are, that are required and the descriptions for those fields. For the most part, you don't necessarily have to memorize these fields or the descriptions of these fields. I just put this here just for your own knowledge. Um, our APIs, as well as our portal features, are going to allow have form validation. So if you get you make a mistake on any of these form field values, or you make a mistake on the portal form that we've put on our uh, when you log into the Telnix portal it will actually come back with an error saying, hey, this, this field value is incorrect, please change it. Or, you know, you put in, you fat finger a phone number, you put in one less digit than you're supposed to, it will tell you, you put in the wrong toll-free number. It's not the right, the right, right format. So a lot of this uh, validation is already done using our APIs and our portal 